Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Deep, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for the technical error. I think uh, there was some error with the participants. We had like reached the maximum, which is a good thing, I guess. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Mr. Deep. So good afternoon, ma'am. We are very happy that you have joined with us today. It's a pleasure, as I said before. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. So we have 100 participants. OK, that's great. That's on Twitter. We have more on YouTube. Oh, OK. Oh, so it's going on YouTube as well? Yeah, OK, I can yeah. see that now. OK, that's amazing. So you can you guys can hear me well, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 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 We'll start. Okay. Well said. Good afternoon, one and all. This is Swati Ramachandran from second year BS in Microbiology, Sri Vidyaniketan Degree College, Tirupati. On behalf of Department of Biological Sciences. I welcome you all for the international webinar on career opportunities in microbiology, current trends, and future prospects. Now, I request our Honorable Principal, Dr. D. Ashalata Man, to give the welcome address. Very good afternoon to everyone who is present for this webinar on the career opportunities in the area of microbiology and the current trends as well as the future prospects. We are very, very thankful to Dr. Deep for accepting our invitation and for being with us here today. It's indeed a great pleasure to be part of this webinar because it goes like, you know, we are hosting this webinar on behalf of Sri Vidyaniketan group of institutions. Any institution, when they have a vision for excellence in education and a commitment towards serve the society and community and at large as our chairperson, very honorable Dr. Mohan Babu sir always does, and our very inspiring CEO, uh, Sri Vishnu sir, gives us encouragement to do all such things where we can reach out to the students, even at this time when most of us are at home. So I think it's a great uh, kind of a time that we're going to have because we have an expert in this area, Dr. Deep is us today. Thank you so much, sir, once again. So coming to this webinar, we, we were actually like contemplating on a lot of uh, ideas and a lot of titles, but we thought that this is very important because as we know, the human existence is always for the survival and survival depends on resistance and the resistance should depend always on the scientific and the experimental interventions. So we need wonderful scientists and upcoming as well as, you know, the scientists who think in a very different way as Dr. Deep does to take biology, microbiology, environment into the concern for encountering the human pain. See, the, the human life is so beautiful, but sometimes when we go through the tough times, like, you know, with, whether it is poverty or whether it is like, you know, without food or whether it's environmental change or whether it's a disease. So everything it depends on the existence of the microbes. So when people like Dr. Deep, you know, are in the front line to actually do a lot of, you know, experimentation, a lot of research, to actually help us, it's going to be a great thing to learn from him as well as tell all the children there that there are numerous opportunities in the field of microbiology where it is part of immunology or biotechnology or agriculture or chemical sciences or whatnot in this world. So I hope that this particular webinar that we are hosting today is going to be a kind of an eye opener to many of the students who are contemplating a kind of a great future or an upcoming prospective future in the area of microbiology and also kind of an eye opener for the children who would like to go for the higher studies when they are passing out of the 12th standard. So we are once again thankful to you and I am very thankful to you and congratulate my team of the organizing committee uh, they did an excellent job of organizing this webinar and connecting all the children today and all of us, you know, who are interested in research today in this webinar. So once again, at this juncture, I thank the management and the, our administrative team for uh, facilitating us with this link and the technical support. Thank you so much, everybody. I welcome you all once again for this webinar. God will abundantly bless us and keep the humankind in his safe hands. Thank you. Have a very good time. Talk to me. A good luck and good wishes and best wishes from all of us for a, a lovely presentation, which is going to start now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
I now request our webinar coordinator, Dr. Charles Lekhipriya, Assistant Professor, to introduce today's eminent resource person. Over to you, ma'am. At the outset, I thank Dr. Deep Jyoti Bhuyan for accepting our invitation to act as a resource person for today's webinar. And I deem it a pleasure to welcome Dr. Deep Jyoti Bhuyan. He is currently working as an ARC postdoctoral research scientist at NICM Health Research Institute, Western Sydney University, Australia. Dr. Deep received his PhD from the University of Newcastle, Australia. He worked on the role of phenolic compounds and antioxidants from Australian eucalyptus as anti-cancer agents for pancreatic malignancy. His present research is aimed at understanding the complex synergistic interactions among various phytochemicals on specific biological targets and how these interactions can be applied as therapeutic strategies against different metabolic disorders. In India, Dr. Deep worked as a senior research fellow at the Assam Agricultural University and he has published several research articles in national and international journals of high repute in the areas of natural products, anti-cancer and antimicrobial research. He is also actively involved in teaching microbiology at the University of Newcastle and has a number of collaborative projects in Australia and India. He has received several awards like higher degree conference scholarship, international postgraduate research scholarship, and central postgraduate research scholarship from Australia. He received merit scholarship for his best academic performance when he was a student in VIT University, Velu, Tamil Nadu, India. We are honored to have you with us today, Dr. Deep Jyoti Bhuyan. Thank you so much, Dr. Charles. You're welcome, Deep. Yes, Swati, go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. I deem it an honor to invite today's esteemed resource person, Dr. Deep Jyoti Bhuyan, to enlighten us about the career opportunities in microbiology, current trends, and future prospects. All participants are eagerly waiting to listen to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks uh, to Principal Ma'am and the organizing committee for having me today here. And it's, it's an absolute pleasure and honor uh, to be able to share my experience and uh, give you a, a bit of details about my journey so far from India to Australia and how you can uh, probably you know, think about a research career in the future uh, because I know most of the people that I'm going to talk to today, the students, they are uh, from microbiology background. So how long do I have uh, for the presentation? You could take your own time, Deep. Okay, okay, I'm just trying to time it, you know, so that I don't go over time. Uh, anyway, I'm going to share my screen. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. yes. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. There was a technical error. Okay. Anyway, so let's start. Um, I always like to start my presentation, especially in microbiology, with this particular slide. I have used it like multiple times, and but this uh, this particular message from Louis Pasteur actually says a lot about microbiology. So it says the role of in um, role of the infinitely small in nature is infinitely large. That means. The best example is COVID-19, SARS, uh, as you know, SARS-CoV-2. It's a small virus, very small virus, but it has shaken the world uh, like never before. You know, so that's why that's what my, the, that's the power of microbiology, and that's why we should know more about it. And uh, it's it's more like this is probably the best time uh, for microbiologists uh, to 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 you know to do research and to know the value uh, what microbiology is capable of. Um, in terms of vaccine development, in terms of studying new diseases, 
Okay, so yeah, this is um, this is my first slide, and it says a lot about microbiology. And Louis Pasteur, as um, most of you probably know, he's the father of microbiology. Okay, so this is my journey. This is my science journey, and uh, I like to. Um, you know, do a lot of uh, social media promotion or science, uh, in terms of science communication. And these are my handles. If you guys uh, want to follow me and follow my journey, what I do uh, in terms of my daily professional and personal life, you guys can do that. And I'll tell you more about it later on, okay? All right, so I, I would like to tell you a little bit about my background as you already have uh, probably, you know, know, like most of the things that uh, Dr has told and um, these are just uh, background information to give you so that you know that my actually career or my uh, the, the study and the research journey has different elements to it so it's it's quite div diverse in a way so I want you to encourage to have a diverse um, uh, research career or a uh, study uh, journey okay so first uh, i did my bachelor's in biotechnology from bangalore university and in that um, course i actually studied uh, three different uh, specializations first one was in biotechnology then genetics and biochemistry and i also did a thesis on um, mendelian uh, genetical traits then i did my masters in applied microbiology from vit university uh, and also worked in defense research and development organization in Assam for six months for my research uh, project. So uh, luckily after my um, master's, I was actually, I got a travel grant to go to Germany uh, to attend uh, a program that was actually geared towards uh, graduates in, um, in microbiology or in virology to be specific. And it was actually funded by this university called Frederick Alexander University and Harvard Medical School. Um, and then in, in uh, my master's, I learned different aspects of microbiology, how you can uh, mostly the applied aspects, like how you can use the knowledge of microbiology in different fields. So it, it actually showed us that microbiology, although it is in a big area in itself, but it can be applied in different um, interdisciplinary fields. And that's why I'm going to talk more how it actually, this particular master's degree actually helped me uh, to branch out in terms of like my PhD and other things, okay? And um, in, in, during this course, actually during this project itself, I, I actually studied the antimicrobial properties of 12 different plants that are widely used in Assamese medicine, traditional Assamese medicine and Ayurveda uh, in the RDO. And then I went to Germany for a while and I did uh, attend uh, the, the, what you call the graduate training program that they had there. And then also presented my work at a national uh, conference uh, in, in Assam itself. And I wrote a review paper. I'm, I'm going to emphasize on papers and publications throughout my seminar, and you'll know why it's important at the end, okay? So, so the master's was, I, did, uh, I produced a review paper both based on my master's research. Then came uh, a scholarship from, a fellowship actually, to a senior research fellowship from uh, Indian Council of Agricultural Research. And it was in Assam Agricultural University. And it was a part of a national uh, agricultural innovation project. So it's a very, very big project. And uh, I was very lucky enough to you know, work on that project as a senior research fellow. And in that project, we learned a lot of things about uh, Northeast itself, because we don't know much about uh, all these traditional practices that they, Northeast India has. And also, like um, it's, it's like a treasure trove of all these different plants and bi biodiversity wise, it's so rich that you can you know, utilize that biodiversity to excrete or extract a different phytochemicals that can be used in modern medicine even or modern agriculture, okay? So in this particular project, I actually studied, interestingly, um, I studied about rice beer. So Northeast, in Northeast, they, we produce traditional different types of rice beer and also like how uh, we can use that rice beer and the plants that they use to produce those rice beer can be actually used in medicine. So I actually started looking into different antimicrobial properties, including bacterial and antifungal properties, as well as antioxidant properties of rice beers. And then um, I produced two research papers based on that. Okay, this was uh, after my master's before my PhD. Okay. 
and then also presented at an uh, at an international conference in Tamil Nadu. And I was also fe featured in several regional and national newspapers, including Times of India. So our research was actually uh, featured there, which was amazing, you know, at that time, because I was just uh, out of my master's and I was like, oh, this is really good. I, I think I can do that. Um, yeah, then came uh, 2014 when I, uh, when I actually received a scholarship, uh, actually two scholarships from, um, in, uh, from University of Newcastle in International Postgraduate Research Scholarship and Central uh, Postgraduate Research Scholarships uh, to pursue my PhD in Australia. And this particular project actually was on anti-cancer properties of uh, Australian eucalyptus, which is, a, which is an Aus um, Australian, um, what you call a type of um, tree. But uh, there, there are around 900 different varieties of Austra uh, Australian eucalypts in Australia itself. So, you know, I had to look into very specific, like what I want to do and all that. So I did that and um, uh, that whole experience doing PhD in Australia um, for, for around three and a half years was, was amazing because I learned so much. And you see these are uh, all these highlighted uh, words in, in red. You see these are, those are very... Uh, distinctive words like you know sometimes you might think that antimicrobial anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory they seem very distinctive but they are actually related in a way you know so so you can always relate a microbiology to different things like being a microbiologist myself i was like when i started my phd project i had no idea about anti-cancer research you know i had to learn everything from scratch which is fine you know you if you are interested you can learn anything basically so these are the things that I did during my PhD research and I published around like quite a lot of papers actually. And then also uh, presented at uh, different international conferences in America, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, and Australia as well. And also did some news and media coverages in Australia. Like my research was antimicrobial research was actually featured in one of the news channels in Australia and several news channels in India actually. And I did some community outreach um, as I said before, I like doing community out outreach. I like interacting with uh, people uh, from different backgrounds and also students from microbiology or biology or science in general. So that, that's a part of the community outreach that I usually try to do whenever I go back to India or like I'm doing right now. I, I consider this as a part of my community outreach, which is amazing, you know, to be able to do that. Um, and then came my postdoctoral research. So soon after finishing my uh, PhD from Newcastle University in 2018, I was offered this job at Western Sydney University and National Institute of Complementary Medicine, which is which we call it NICM. Um, so it's a part of Western Sydney University. It's an independent research institute, and um, we have. Uh, our area of expertise is to do uh, research in natural products. And uh, so far, like I'm still working on that. So I'm, 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 uh, uh, I'm still a postdoctoral research scientist there. And so far we have produced like, you know, several uh, publications and conference and news coverages in India and also community outreach, okay? Now, so these are just uh, some screen screenshot of my publications, just to show you like, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's a journey. It's a journey that you have to build by yourself. And it, it you know, it's something that um, all researchers, if you want to become a researcher, that publications is something that we all should um, aim for. So I'm just going to just skip through these. And okay, so this is like the, some of the news coverages from NBN News Australia. And then some conferences that I presented in America, New Zealand, and Singapore. And this that's like a random lamb that I saw in New Zealand. I thought it's uh, it's very cute, so I thought I'd put that up as well. Um, and then, yeah. So these are some of the pictures. Okay. So let's talk about microbiology now. So as you all know, um, microbiology is a very uh, diverse um, area of science or biology to be specific. In, in biology, uh, in microbiology, there are actually different sections. So you'd see bacteriology, which is about bacteria, then mycology, which is about fungus or fungi, and protozoology, which is about protozoa, then virology and phycology. Biology is all about viruses. We all know now what biology is because of COVID-19. And, uh, and phycology, which is the study of algae, okay? 
So my, as I said before, microbiology is extremely interdisciplinary. So just because that you're, do, um, you're doing a degree in microbiology does not mean that you have to pursue your research in microbiology in the future. You can actually use that knowledge to do something else, to work on genetics, for example, or cancer, you know, or inflammation, or you name it. So there are lots of options that you can actually choose from. And in terms of career options, I would say that um, there are actually two, two aspects of um, careers. Uh, one is in industry and one is in academia. Uh, I would probably talk more about uh, the academic aspects of um, careers in microbiology in this uh, particular session, because that's what I can probably tell you because I, from my experience. Uh, in terms of industry, if you see, uh, there are options like you can work at a pharmaceutical industry uh, a biotech industry, for example, in India, we have Biocon. You guys probably have heard a lot about Biocon. It's a very good company to work with, and they do amazing uh, product development and research in, in uh, biology. And they have a very good scope for microbiology students as well. Then there is food industry. Like, you can work as a QC. That means quality, quali quality control. And or also you can work as a food product development. For example, if a company is uh, producing a uh, fermented food product, like fermented um, juice, for example, or like um, cheese or yogurt or things like that. So you can work there. You can use your skills uh, to work for a, for a food industry based company as well. And also, as I said before, fermentation like wine, beer, cheese, and this is a big industry and it's, it's a growing industry as well in India right now. So there's a huge scope for microbiology students there. And then agriculture industry, uh, because microbiology is directly related. There is a different branch for my, in microbiology called agricultural microbiology that, look into, that looks into different aspects of uh, how we can um, use the knowledge of microbiology in agriculture and improve the yield or reduce the burden of agricultural diseases. And same goes for forensics, you know, uh, forensic science that also, um, they also need microbiology graduates. In terms of academia, there are, um, when I say academia, it means universities, then research organizations and labs um, throughout the world, okay? Not just in India, but overseas as well. And in these, um, in these labs or universities, you can work as a food microbiologist or clinical and medical microbiologist that actually um, basically focus on uh, medical or um, different diseases or clinical aspects of different diseases um, related to microbiology. Um, then you can become ecologist uh, that studies the microbes that are present in the environment. Then marine biologist, as, the, as it explains, it's about all marine science and uh, the microbes that are present in marine environment. And also interestingly, you can also become a science writer because that's a big, um, uh, what you call field right now, science communication. As you know, um, most of the time we scientists have issues, like we have problems communicating with, um, with the general public, you know? Like we, we don't know how to communicate with the uh, public in a very easy way. So, so science communication actually plays a big role in actually translating or like communicating your um, research to uh, the general public so that they can understand what uh, you are actually doing in terms of research without being too scientific about it, you know? So whenever we, we talk about science, we become very technical, you know, we, we use this, all these jargons and things like that, which uh, the common public might find it difficult to follow. So that's why the science writer or scientific uh, communication is a very important aspect of scientific research these days. And it's a big um, opportunity for microbiology or biology graduates to become a science writer if they don't want to become a researcher in, in future. Anyway, so let's do, so this is a um, picture from American Society of Microbiology and they actually tell you different, uh, what you call, sorry, I'm just uh, going to move my window a little bit. So, so you, you can see that uh, after a high school diploma, you can um, do an associate degree or bachelor's degree in microbiology. And these are different things that you can become after each degree in, in, in microbiology. So for example, after bachelor's, you can actually, uh, or your master's, you can actually work in a lab as a lab technician. 
or you can work on a project as a research assistant or lab instructor, then biosafety specialist or a lab manager for that matter. That's after your bachelor's and master's. And then after your PhD, you can become a postdoctoral scientist like me, you know, like what I am doing right now. Then we have different levels of um, uh, academic career after after the PhD, after our PhD. So after postdoctoral scientist, you go on and become uh, a lecturer, then an associate professor, and then professor. So this is the hierarchy usually. So so if you are going interested in doing research or in doing PhD, which I'm going to talk about uh, now, like how you can actually uh, decide whether you are really fit for a PhD or whether you really would uh, become a good researcher in the future, uh, or also like what are the ways that you can um, opt to, to apply for a PhD, especially in Australia, because uh, that's where uh, I think I'm probably will be more it will be more relevant for me to talk about because I did my PhD from Australia, so I know like, how the process works from from my experience. So, so I'll talk a little bit, little bit about like uh, how what you should do in terms of preparing yourself for your P, um, for a PhD in Australia. Okay. Okay. So, um, in Australian culture, is very laid back and very easygoing. But that doesn't mean that uh, you know the the kind of uh, research that we produce is actually extremely high quality. You know, so so the laid back nature, the friendly nature, is actually quite good for for us researchers because when when I started my PhD, I actually immediately came to know that people are extremely friendly. They're very helpful. They'll help you through different things, and it actually makes things easier for people to. Uh, do things like a PhD because PhD, as as um, Lekia might be able to verify, that it actually is um, something that you really have to be interested in. Otherwise, you won't be able to um, do it because you need a constant motivation to do a PhD. And it's 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 not like that. You mo you're motivated one day and um, the next day it will be fine. You have to actually constantly motivate yourself every morning, <laughs> basically, to, to, when you are doing a PhD, because it's, it's a, a lot of hard work, but it's completely worth it. It's extremely rewarding. Uh, so I would recommend um, like people who are actually interested to do research, they should actually apply for a PhD um, before, like, you know, because it, that will give them a good way of, um, what you call a uh, good way to get into research um, career. So anyway, so how to apply for a PhD in Australia? So, so Australian universities, they offer many international PhD scholarships. Okay. And um, they, uh, the best way to look for those scholarships is to go to their websites, the university websites, and also the other websites like findaphd.com or Indo-Australian. There's a scheme called Indo-Australian that's a joint venture between India and Australia. So they also provide scholarships. So you can look into those and there are Commonwealth scholarships as well that you can look into uh, to, to, to start a career or to start a PhD in Australia or to apply for a PhD in Australia. And also I mentioned Twitter there. There's a big um, Twitter, what you call a logo there because uh, these days um, we, we like us researchers, we like to actually uh, promote our research or talk about our research on Twitter. It's a very good way of communicating with uh, audience from different background. And also it, it's a good way to advertise because the reach is, Twitter is popular everywhere basically. So, so you can actually follow researchers uh, on Twitter and see if they have any um, advertised PhD projects. So they actually put advertisements for PhD project that you can actually follow these researchers and then get into touch with them and talk, like ask more questions about the PhD projects if they are offering any, okay? But I should warn you one, um, about one thing though, that these scholarships are extremely competitive. So highly competitive. And that's why, remember I was telling, I was emphasizing more on my publications, especially before my PhD, like my master's and uh, throughout my senior research fellowship, this highly competitive um, nature is actually decided by your publications. So they will look into your research profile 
and they will ask they will see if they will ask you if you have published anything and if you have published uh, in good journals then you have a very good chance of getting a scholarship but it's not there's not not like a magic formula or anything you have to constantly work on it to 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 get these kind of scholarship but the good thing is that they have actually multiple scholarship throughout the year so so you can actually apply uh, choose to apply like for example they have several rounds and those you can choose which round to go for but before that you, there are a few things that you need to do so how and when to start okay so start early for example i'm giving an example uh, if you are in your last semester of your masters then that's when you start your last semester that's the that's the time that you should actually start contacting these uh, supervisors overseas and ask uh, ask them for if there is any opportunities available so that you have to start early this process takes a long time sometimes even 6 to 12 months or even more so you have to you have to start the process very early before that before you before you start contacting the supervisor you have to you have to know what you want to do okay i'm not i'm not asking you to give like a get a proper idea like a proper topic or i'm going to research on this particular topic but you should at least have a rough idea like on on what area of microbiology or 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 on what area of biotechnology or biology you want to work um for your in your future for your to develop a research um what you call profile in that area so you have to choose that you know before you before you contact any potential supervisors and then uh i'm giving you, you as a, an example when i started my phd uh, i i knew that i wanted to work on antimicrobial and anti cancer properties of natural products so that that was the rough idea that i had so i actually started looking into different research group that was that were in australia uh, that actually work on those topics at that time okay so you have to search for different keywords like oh anti cancer research in australian university like that and then you will find different research groups that are working on those areas and then you can start locating the the people that you want to work with and the people that you want to that you think that oh this particular person will be able to supervise me in a very um good way and i think the his area of interest will be um quite similar to what i i want to do my for for my phd and then it is also important to be flexible so for example if if you want to work on anti bacterial properties of a particular natural product but your supervisor is more interested to do an antiviral research so you have to be very uh, flexible in that way okay um you know make sure that it's still in your area uh, but also be ready to be a little bit more flexible okay and then every university they'll have a supervisor directory so you can go to every university's website and look for the people that you want to work with in in that directory and then read more about their uh, profile or what they have done what are the papers that they have published things like that and then uh, you start contacting the potential supervisors that you are actually interested to work with and you, you can also talk to the graduate research school of university so every university in australia they have a school called graduate research school and they're there to help you with your uh, any prop, uh, the whole application process um, for admission and scholarship for phd and they will also guide you like if you have any queries if you have any questions um, doubts then you can directly ask them and they are quite quite helpful in answering that okay especially because of the the process is so uh, complicated it seems so complicated sometimes so it's always a good idea to ask for help from the graduate research school from of the universities all right so now the you know that okay i know how that i want to work on that this particular project or i want to work with this particular person uh, but how do you know that whether you are competitive enough, enough or not to get a scholarship okay so you you can you cannot like always 100% say oh no i'm going to get this scholarship because it's so complicated when i got i got my scholarship back in 2014 i was actually shocked you know as oh okay that's that's like i i i was quite surprised in a way in a in a good way uh so yeah it, there's like um, sometimes it's very hard to know whether you are really competitive enough or not for those kind of scholarships so in that case um i would suggest you to do these things okay to to get competitive to get um, get the profile 
uh, a good profile so that you can secure a scholarship for your PhD in Australia. So the first thing is to do, um, to get diverse experience. What do I mean by that? So, like sometimes we have this tendency to, to work on like the same people, you know, throughout our life, like throughout our, you know, what you call it, masters, for example, or bachelors. But it's very important to get a diverse experience. So work with different people, different groups and different organizations. And in India, like a, the government has re have recently started paying a lot of attention to uh, development, research and development. So they're uh, putting in a lot of funds and um, they're sponsoring different uh, universities to do research in different aspects, including microbiology. So it's very important that you actually contact these people and uh, you actually volunteer for, to work with them. So vo volunteering at universities and research labs is extremely important. And also like you can get paid or unpaid internship. The, the internship that I had with DRDO was unpaid. And I was quite happy to do that because that was a part of my uh, master's thesis. So it's extremely important to get those kind of internships or volunteering work. Uh, and it, it makes your CV or resume look strong uh, for, a, for a PhD scholarship, okay? And then it's also very important uh, to read a lot. So you read different sorts of um, literature, like scientific papers, like research papers, review papers, books, magazines, online articles on, on topics like um, that you want to uh, do um, research in, in, in future, okay? And also it's, it's very important to polish your English and writing skills. Um, it, we are not um, expecting you to have like amazing English, but you know, a basic level of English is extremely important because that's a requirement for visas as well. So when you apply for a PhD or um, a PhD in, in Australia, of course you have to apply for a visa as well if you get the scholarship. And in that time, that during that time, you you will need to have um, uh, a proficiency uh, test done for your English, and it's it's quite important. Then I would suggest you to do some public speaking as well, if you can. It's like talk about talk about your work, talk about your profile to people. Like when I say public speaking, I'm not I'm not uh, like imagining like thousand people. You know, just you know, a group of friends, for example. You know, or like family or things like that. Just talk. You know, or even though sometimes you, you you might think that they will not understand, it's okay because you know that way you are actually building your confidence as well to talk about your uh, work. Okay, then the highlighted one is publish your work. As I mentioned before, it, publishing is extremely important. I understand that you know when you are doing a bachelor's or master's, sometimes it's not feasible to do a research paper. Okay, so because you don't, you haven't done any research yet. In that case, you know what I would suggest that you read a lot, like um, read different literature, as I said before, and then write a review paper if you can. Okay write a review paper on a topic. So for example, oh, I want to write a review paper on um, antimicrobial properties of uh, citronella or antimicrobial properties of neem, for example, you know, things like that. And then read on that topic and write a review and then try to publish that review. And also it's very important that you avoid uh, predatory journals. There are different journals that actually ask you uh, to write for them and um, you publish with them but the, at the end you would know that these journals are not good you know they're like predatory they, they are not going to add anything to your uh, resume so look for those predatory journals and try avoid those journals okay at any cost and also if you can attend or even present at national and international conferences be that organized by you know by your university or your college you know try to attend that and try to speak to different speakers from um, uh, uh, from different countries you know that will actually give you um, good exposure in terms of what's going on around you what's going on in the world in in that area of uh, your interest cuz these are the things that you can actually follow to make sure that um, you are competitive enough okay Okay, so now, uh, sorry. Yeah. as I said before, uh, uh, now that you know that oh, I am actually quite competitive and I might have a good chance of getting a scholarship and now you want to contact the potential supervisors. So you want to know like, oh, I, I want to work with this particular person, but I have to find a way to contact this person in a way that he, I make a good impression on this person. 
so that he or she will be able to or will be interested to supervise me so in that case what you what you should do you should do your research that means you should read about their work okay about the research work what they have published the most researchers usually have like a profile page as well on the web on the university read where go through those uh, profile pages and see what they have published recently and try to read those papers and then think uh, how you can actually contribute to their research for example i'm working currently working on anti cancer properties of natural products and how these natural products can be combined with standard drugs to increase the efficacy of standard drugs so so if you go through my profile you will see that most of my um, publications are related to anti cancer or anti microbial for that matter so you read those things and then you 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 propose a theme like for example you you think that oh i actually have read your research and i um i think that uh, it's very interesting and um i i think that my expertise or my background will be able to help um your research team or will fit into your research team quite well and uh, so you have to think critically you have to think in a way that um, not just you know sending an email saying oh uh, i read you, i read about your work and i find it interesting and i'm interested to work with you but that that actually doesn't give us much so we we get emails like that on a daily basis from different um, students especially from india that they say that you know the, um, to, those are very generic emails you know they send those emails to different uh, people in australia or different people worldwide like uh, different researchers so they, what they do they say that oh, i'm very interested to um, i'm i read your work it, i find it interesting and i want to do i want to work with you and um, i think my skills will be helpful but they don't explain how how your skills will be helpful and what you have thought about it what, whether you have or do you have any specific topic in mind and how do you think that that topic or that particular topic will fit into our research team that is very important to to know to do, to think about that you know and and after after you do all that research but by, by research i mean after you read uh, about the potential supervisors um, uh, profile and their papers then you contact them okay and um, as you can see here on my slide that that you know just the points i am not going to repeat them and uh, i think i think i have explained most of the things and um, i think it, as i said it's extremely important for you to to um, explain how you're going to um, fit into that um, particular research group and how it will complement how your skills will complement them okay then okay so next step so you have done now you know that you have done all your work you have you have written a very good email like and you are quite uh, certain that your supervisor potential for supervisor will probably give you a positive re response and now so if they like your profile the, your supervisor will actually um, agree they will say that oh, okay, i agree to supervise you and i they will ask you to apply uh, for the university scholarship because in australia uh, the whole process has to go through the university so you'll have to apply through the university uh, scholarship but they will the supervisor will guide you through it or the graduate research school will guide you through it then um, also at this stage like once your supervisor agrees um, at this stage it, it will be your um, job uh, to write a research proposal with your supervisor and um so so your su supervisor will certainly like help you how to because that's what uh, we do like whenever we get a good student we tell them that we are interested to work with them and um, they with them we ask for their interest what they are want to work with work on and then we try to uh, find a proposal that works best for him uh, the best for that candidate and best for us as well okay so so and in that case we need to write a research proposal to submit uh, as a part of the application process and in this particular step your grades the all the grades that you have received starting from your bachelor's okay from bachelor's masters and your research experience then your publications then your conference presentations will play a key role because the university actually makes a ranking list based on the the all these things and they will rank you 
because the university will only have a limited number of uh, scholarship available in each round. As far as I remember, when I, I applied for my PhD um, scholarship, there were only seven or eight given uh, throughout the university and there were more than 500 applicants. So you know how competitive that is. So that's why it's, it's extremely important that you build your um, research experience, you build your research profile uh, so that you are you know, competitive enough to actually go through this whole process and you know that you are going to um, have a good outcome at the end. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Then there's, um, there's another thing I want to talk is that um, there is other things that you need to remember, okay? While, while you're going through this whole process. Uh, because I didn't know, when I was doing my master, uh, bachelor's, I had no idea that I'm going to do a PhD and I'm going to be a researcher. I'll be like, oh, I'll probably just work at a biotech company after my bachelor's, but that didn't happen. I ended up doing my master's. And then after my master's, I ended up working uh, for two years at a university and then did my PhD. So, so sometimes, you know, sometimes we just stress out too much and I, all I'm saying that it's okay to not know what you want to do next, you know, think about it, but it, you don't have to be certain. Just yeah, just think about it. And then um, compete it with, with yourself. Like it's a cliche, you know, it doesn't, um, it, it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. Don't compete with anyone else. Compete with yourself. Try to uh, excel in your own way. Like do things that you like to do in terms of research and then, and then um, compete with yourself. That's what I'm saying, you know? And curiosity is the key. That means the more interested you are to learn anything, the better chances you have to succeed, okay? And also important to work smartly and strategically. So smartly as, I, I hear these things about, thing about uh, people saying you have to work hard, but I think the most, uh, it, it, these days you have to work smart. So if you work smart and strategically, you can actually achieve a lot of things um, in your research career. And also, um, in terms of um, talking to people, just because um, you are a microbiologist or you are a biologist, that doesn't mean that you should not interact with researchers from other fields like physics, chemistry, and all that. Always try to talk to people from different scientific backgrounds and you'll always end up learning something new. I guarantee you that. I talk to people from different uh, backgrounds almost every day and I always learn something from them. And prob they probably do the same from me. You know, that's, that, that's how it works. So it's very important to talk about these kind of things to people. And finally, you know, don't listen to what people say. I'm saying, I'm telling you all these things, you know, it seems very contradictory, but it's extremely important that you should not listen to what people are saying you should do. You should always decide what you would like to do for a profession. You, you are a microbiologist, but that doesn't mean that you have to pursue a career in research at the end. You can do other things as well, you know, whatever you like to do. Because at the end, in terms of research uh, profession, people's interests play a very important role, okay? Yeah, I think that's probably it. I'm not sure how helpful it was, but I um, just wanted to give you a general overview of um, the experiences and things. Thank you. Thank you so much sir, for your valuable knowledge and giving us the right direction to choose career in research as well as in life cycles. I now request our GNPG coordinator, Dr. P. Manohar sir, to share his thoughts on today's webinar. Thank you, Swati. It's uh, my pleasure to share my views on this webinar. First of all, I would like to thank uh, our deep sir and organizers. Uh, Dr. Lake Apriya Menon and the participants, uh, all the students. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, international webinar uh, conducted by Sri Vidyan Ketan Degree College on career opportunities in microbiology, current trends and future prospects. With this webinar, I am sure that all participants are really enlightened with career opportunities in microbiology. This webinar covers our uh, deep thought covers many, many, how we are going to enter into the uh, different uh, places, locations uh, to do as a post-doctorate fellowship like PDF. 
and uh, what uh, our uh, resource person has told that about the quality in research is there in uh, australia so those who need the uh, quality of research and uh, interest to do phd or higher education definitely it would help to all the participants and also uh, sar has covered about the nature friendly nature and environment in that uh, in australia it's a very good uh, for the students uh, it will be comfortable it will be safe for uh, all the students to do phd in australia i am rightly say that uh, and also our uh, resource person has uh, covered many many like uh, how we are going to apply for phd in uh, australia when to start especially in final semester it will take 6 to 12 months or sometimes it will be more so that is a plan uh, our uh, participants have our students have uh, their own plan when they are going to start uh, to uh, go to this process and sar has suggested the books uh, reading the books and uh, referring the magazines and online articles they want to refer it's a good uh, uh, sign uh, to all the participants uh, to go for uh, this aspect and uh, need to develop all the participants on the behalf of all the participants they need to develop uh, their writing skills as well as public speaking skills and also publication of works uh, what they have done is uh, is really good for all the students they, they can follow these are all the topics uh, sar has covered is really good and really uh, impressive by all the participants and also uh, here strategic one of the point i am very much uh, interesting about uh, uh, this webinar smart and smart working and strategic working it's a very very uh, need uh, very much need for all the participants or uh, those who are interested to join in pd as a pdf in other countries and also i want to uh, remember uh, our uh, principal madam honorable principal madam um, ashalata madam words yesterday she told that during uh, trial session what he what she said is knowledge is not power knowledge is not power but sharing the knowledge is power really uh, sir has shared sir thank you once again you have shared a lot of knowledge to our, all of our participants really we, we got uh, very much uh, information from you sir definitely finally i thank to all organizers and uh, uh, so our principal madam and participants definitely uh, in future uh, we are expecting some more international webinars uh, we will we will definitely will conduct Uh, with the help of uh, resource persons once again thank you thank you to all thank you thank you much thank you sir thank you. now it's time for the question and answer session i'm glad that we have participants from russia assam kerala tamil nadu and various institutes of andhra pradesh welcome to the question and answer session and now i request dr v shri devi man to start the question and answer session Uh, so many students are asking uh, some of the specific questions about uh, opportunities of PhDs in India. Specific questions about opportunities in India. Uh, what are the opportunities of PhD in India? Oh, there are actually. quite a lot of opportunities i think uh, most universities do cover do offer uh, phd scholarships but uh, correct me if i'm wrong because i'm not very familiar with the inter, uh, the indian way uh, like indian system but i think uh, you have to go through this particular exam conducted by csir and um, to to be eligible for those phd programs so they are actually quite competitive but i feel that i think csir um entrance examination is extremely uh theory based uh and you have to read quite a lot from different uh what you call different subjects of uh, biotechnology and microbiology and biology in general to to be able to qualify for that exam so th there are opportunities but it is as i said it is quite competitive and you do have to qualify for that exam there is another question how to become a quality control officer hmm oh, that's a very good question actually um i think for quality control what i would say in terms of microbiology uh, food microbiology um industry you will have to have a degree in microbiology as well 
to to be able to conduct or uh, to be able to do a, a quality control uh, job at an industry uh but there i think uh, most industries also run different training sessions as well for example if they think that you are a good candidate or in, or you might uh, belong to genetics or biotechnology you might not have any microbiological ex uh, experience even in that case they might actually be able to give uh, give you proper training before you start your job so but i would i would imagine that for uh, to become a quality control um, officer in a in an industry you would need a microbiology degree thank you Uh, what are the career opportunities in food technology in overseas after MSc food technology? Hmm. Um, I can tell you about Australia. In in Australia, the uh, the university where I did my PhD from. Uh, my my PhD is actually from the Department of Food Science. Okay. Although my topic was in cancer and eucalyptus, but my PhD department itself was uh, in food science and I. could see that many of my uh, students the students that i taught uh, in bachelors they were actually after finishing their bachelors itself they actually got placed in different uh, food industries in australia in in this um, particular state of australia and um, but i think uh, we in regards to hiring international students they actually prefer hiring people who are already in australia uh so food industry because the visa process is so complicated sometimes and for them to you know support you for that visa process being an international applicant it actually is an added um uh, what you call tr trouble for them so that's why i i, I don't um, i didn't actually see them hiring many international candidates most of the candidates that they, they hired were from australia itself but i i'm sure that in terms of food technology um what do you call career opportunities in india there are so many food companies now like there are well known companies like amul for example those companies hire food technologists on a regular basis for the, for their work so so but i think it's always a good good way to a uh, good uh, idea to try to try for uh, overseas um, jobs and contact the companies uh, human resources so they all companies will have a human resource department so if you are interested to do a food technology job you can actually reach out to them say uh, tell them about your qualifications and experience and tell them that ask them whether they are hiring people from overseas or not uh, would you suggest any universities for pursuing phd in india Mm. Oh, there are amazing universities in India. There are so many universities. It depends on what you would like to do. Basically, as I said before, it depends on your topic or research area of expertise. I cannot really pinpoint one university saying that or just go for this particular because every university has its own strength when it comes to research. One university might be very good at doing uh, physical physics research, and one might be good at doing biological research. So you will have to. choose that you will have to select what based on your topic what are the best qualities to become a good scientist oh wow wow that's that's a great question uh, that's a great question uh there are many actually uh i would say the first is being patient okay you have to be very very patient because most of the time scientific experiments don't work as you plan them to be so you have to um be ready to uh, face failures you have to embrace failures it's it that's probably one of the most important qualities i would say uh, to to become a scientist if you are patient if you know how to handle failures uh, and if you are interested in scientific research those are the qualities for be, to become a good scientist how to apply for the post of research assistant postdoc research assistant as in postdoctoral researcher uh, jrf srf after okay. completion of their masters okay so in in india or in australia both in india as well as in australia okay okay um i think for for to become a jrf or junior research fellow in india um you'll you'll still need to go through that csir exam that i mentioned before 
and um you can click yeah you can you can add if you if you think that i'm wrong because you know i i have very little experience in terms of yeah 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 job prospects in india uh but i i would say that you still need to go through that csr entrance examination ICMR, yeah. yeah yeah there are different organizations that do that and you have to follow that can we do msc through technology with bachelors in microbiology is that a good option Yes, I would say it's an amazing option because you will you will bring the skills of microbiology to food technology and food technology. If you think of it, if you think about it, it'll it has um, because fermented food, you know, yogurt, cheese, all these things have microbiological part uh, linked to it. So you can definitely bring the skills that you have learned uh, in your bachelor's in microbiology and do a master's in food technology. It's a very good combination, I would say. Uh, do we need any exams like CSIR net to do phd in abroad no you don't <laughs> that's the best part i think if i if, if i would have failed you know if 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 i had the uh, uh if australia had a entrance examination i'm very bad at writing an entrance examination so because uh, i i'd like to think um, more in a practical oriented uh, manner thing like science in a in a practical approach you know rather than theoretical approach i know theory is important but you know to base something entirely on theory i don't i don't um, find it very relevant so uh, but yeah to answer the question there's no such thing as entrance examination to get a phd abroad but you do need to have a few scores for your english so there are uh, english proficiency tests that you can uh, take to prove that you have good enough english to enter Uh, a phd program in australia and that uh, that is the only test that you need and uh, that test is not very difficult to do my specialization is bioinformatics can i use mm-hmm. computational biology in microbiology of course yes um computational biology is used everywhere so so for microbiology for example these day you probably have heard this particular term called microbiota so this is about the gut microbiota so the the microbial communities that are present in our gut so there is a lot of research going on on this particular uh, topic and computational uh, biology plays a key role in that aspects and same thing happens with drug development for, for example if you are uh, trying to develop a new antibiotic or antimicrobial drug computational biology can play a major role and same goes for coronavirus research as well computational biology can tell you what are the potential drug that you can look into in terms of therapy thank you may i know the scope in doing msc in astro microbiology oh wow okay i'm getting really good questions i'm i really appreciate these questions um Yes, astrobiology. I think there are only few universities. Uh, was it the question about MSc in astrobiology, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are only few universities that offer astrobiology. To be specific, I think, as far as I remember, um, uh, I, when I was actually um, looking for PhD uh, positions abroad, I actually came through this particular. what they call a uh, program from germany so germany has a quite good um, what they call programs for astrobiology so they can actually look into um, uh, that part- those particular programs so uh, participants if you would like to ask questions directly please raise your hand one of the participants uh, she gaulikar rachna could you please raise your hand so that we could notice and we could unmute yourself i think she has just raised uh... yeah okay i'm going to unmute her oh, okay uh hello sir uh, i'm rachna golikar i'm from india and i'm currently pursuing my uh, bsc in uh, genetics microbiology and chemistry so mm-hmm. i recently finished my first year and now i'm in second year so like i have recently written a review article on uh, corona vaccines so like yes. is it good to write review articles right since uh, i mean beginning of our bsc degree or we should stop and then move to our msc and then start writing the articles 
No, I think I think you should start early. It's a great thing that uh, you have already started. Uh, when I was doing my bachelor's, I had no idea how to write an article. So, so yeah, you're definitely on the right track right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's good. And, uh... I have another doubt, like I have recently yeah. started uh, to communicate science through my abstracts, like art abstracts, like sci art. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, like, is uh, like, would it be a good option to choose as a career yeah. to Absolutely. communicate science? Absolutely, because uh, we receive emails from uh, different media houses, uh, like quite regularly asking us to con convert our um, thesis or papers into graphical abstracts, for example. So, so yeah, it, there's definitely a lot of scope because it gives you a snapshot of everything that you have done in terms of research uh, in, in a particular article in one picture, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, definitely, definitely. I would suggest uh, to explore different um, new areas like the one that you suggested. It's, it's, it's amazing, you should. Yeah, like as you mentioned, I mean, during your presentation, like to explore to different people from different backgrounds so that you'll get new ideas. So yeah, this lockdown yeah. has given me a lot of opportunities to speak to different people through LinkedIn. And yeah, yeah. it's really going amazing. Like getting new ideas in the, in the field of science is really great. And your uh, uh, career opportunities in microbiology also enhanced me to think more about it. That's, and, yeah, that's good. Happy to help. Yeah, yes, sir. And there is one more thing, like, um, our college is like publishing this review article. But apart from that review article, I'm working on this um, science abstracts, like whatever I read, I just put it into an abstract. So yep. uh, um, can I get to know some good tools uh, to do it on computer itself? Because right now I'm doing it by hand. So can I get few good tools online so that I can work it on computer? Yeah, off the top of my head, uh, I use this particular program uh, website. It's, I think it's called biorender.com. Oh, yeah. I work yeah. with that biorender. Yes, yes, one. yes. So that's, I think, probably the easiest. And I think it's free as well. So you, anyone mm. can have access to it. Yeah. Uh, maybe that, use that one. Um, yeah, that, that might be a good option. But you already know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, like apart from that, like, are there any websites that would help uh, to get good icons or good information related to science? Yeah, I mean, I have only used BioRender so far, so I probably won't be able to give you a good advice on that. But yeah, just look through uh, Google and if, whether you can find something similar or something better than that. Okay. No, because science communication is trending nowadays and yes, many yeah, of the youth is back of it, like how to communicate in very simple language exactly so exactly i just want to know from you because even this became a part of our career uh, option yeah. of course of course definitely scientific writing is a big uh, option right now yeah 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 so thank you so much sir it was Sorry. great no. to listen to you you're welcome one more question any information about covid vaccine sir mm. COVID vaccines, because uh, you do hear a lot of information on social media, don't you? Like, uh, especially on news as well. I think sometimes you just feel like, oh, I should probably stop watching news or social media for COVID. Uh, but um, I think there are many vaccine candidates uh, in the pipeline, but uh, there's, I can't say that anyone has reached a phase two clinical trial yet. So that's the um, trial that you do before you can actually say that this whether or not the particular candidate vaccine candidate will be suitable for uh, the market. So uh, I'm not aware of any that has um, that has actually gone through that trial yet. There are many uh, throughout even in Australia and Perth. There's a trial that's happening I think from yesterday, and they have started um, uh, the the vaccine candidate on humans. So it's still in the trial stages. So it's very, very early to say what's happening right now. Yeah. Hello, sir. This is uh, Sundarmurti Shravani. And uh, I have got a few questions. Um, one of our participants want to know that uh, if integrated PhD is a better option than the uh, individual masters and then going to PhD. Mm. Uh, it seems like it's a shorter option to me. I mean, I feel that um, in your master's, you why the master's degree is important because 
when you when you start your PhD, they they expect you to have a little bit of research background. So so when you do a master's degree uh, for two years, especially in India, you actually have the chance to develop your research profile so that you are eligible for a PhD. But in case of uh, integrated PhD, correct me if I'm wrong, because um, I think it's it's a shorter course as well, like combined but shorter. Yeah. Yes, so. Yeah, so that's why I, I feel that the traditional route of um, going through a master's and PhD would be better to gain more exposure in terms of research. Okay, so I, I concur with that. Yeah. And uh, one of the participants want to know better career options in microbiology. Mm, okay, I, I don't think I, I follow that question. I mean, what do I'm, you mean by better? Uh, like uh, they just mentioned the yeah, better yeah. career options. Uh, better than what was uh, discussed in the seminar or better? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure what are the better options, but I, I would say those are the options that you have. There might be new options because the, this is a rapidly evolving field. As you know, that things change in science and uh, research quite quickly. Uh, but for now, I think those are the those are the solid options that you have. I cannot actually um, comment whether which one is better than the other. You know, I feel all 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 uh, all of them are important. Okay, sir. Yeah. And uh, another question is, uh, which is better? I mean, uh, MSc microbiology or MSc biotechnology? Depends on your interest. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank Depends you, on your interest. That was. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Deep, uh, Dr. Deep, for uh, uh, for your patience and uh, very good presentation. Uh, Swati, you could continue. Please continue. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for your valuable information. And now we'll move on. I request our head, Department of Biological Sciences, Dr. S. V. Ravikant, sir, to propose word of thanks. Thank you very much. <clears throat> on behalf of organizing committee. I would like to thank Dr. Deep for his excellent talk. I could see the adrenaline rush in delivering the content, and you have dwelt upon almost all the areas of microbiology one can lay his hands on. You were absolutely spot on about the career in microbiology, and I'm sure students have received a free consultation from an expert. It was crisp and you have put it everything in a single capsule. I am pretty sure the student community would pursue research in areas like forensic science, agriculture, genetics, immunology, quality control, science writers. This is something new and I'm pretty sure this is one area I would be interested in because I teach English. So you also mentioned about the communication skills, importance of communication skills. This is one area students can definitely lay their hands on. Dr. Deep, this is just the beginning. We would like to associate ourselves with you in future also. I am pretty sure that some of our students will join your lab. Let me tell you, you have a mesmerizing voice, Deep. It was a complete mesmerizing talk from you. Thanks a lot. My sincere thanks to our beloved and dynamic principal, Dr. Asha Lata, Madam, for all her support and encouragement. Thanks, Madam. I would like to thank our UG and PG coordinator, Dr. P. Manohar, for his encouragement and support. He has been always with us right from the beginning. I would like to express my thanks to Mr. Munishankar, lecturer in computer science. He has made this possible all these feedback links and all the computer related works. It was he who um, executed it and made it possible. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all the students and participants without whom this event would not have been unfolded. I would like to thank our student coordinators, Ms. Yamini, Ms. Shramani Sundarmurti and Ms. Uh, Swati Ramchandran for all their efforts right from the beginning in making this webinar a grand success. Thanks, Amma, all of you. 
I would like to thank our management for supporting us in all possible ways in making this event possible. I would like to thank media team of Sri Vidyaniketan Educational Trust for designing brochures and e-certificates. I would like to place on record that the webinar coordinator, Dr. Lekha Priya, fondly known as CLP Madam, among student community for spending sleepless nights and leaving no stone unturned to make this webinar a grand success. Thanks, Amma. You have made DBS very proud. The feedback link will be shared through WhatsApp, and I request you to send the fill and send the feedback links. E-certificates will be sent to you in a couple of days for those students who registered in the webinar. I would also like to thank Rachna Gaudikar, a very young student. I am pretty sure some of uh, our students will take a leaf out of her book. She has started writing review articles. And, and as Deep has correctly mentioned, we didn't even know that something like a review article exists when we were in undergraduates. So thanks, Amma. You are doing an excellent job. And I'm pretty sure you will uh, be a very good scientist in course of time. I thank one and all for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Back to you, Swati. Thank you, sir. I thank all the participants for joining us today. Just kindly fill the feedback forms for receiving your e-certificates. Thank you all and take care. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, Ravikan, sir, uh, for uh, uh, congratulating me. It's nothing like that. It's just that I want to explore science in my own field. So uh, it's just that uh, right since I started my career in BSc, like um, I was opposed, I mean, I wasn't interested to do MBBS because I want to explore many things through BSc and then MSc and then my PhD work. So it's, uh, it's just the first initial step that I have taken uh, to start writing the review article. And then uh, as my passion to art, I have started to make art abstracts in science. So it's nothing to tell me thanks or nothing like that. It's just my, I, I just wanted to ask sir about more in this uh, field. So that is why I wanted to ask him, that's it. So thank you very much. Like this webinar, uh, it really gave me a lot of opportunities in the field of microbiology as a career. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Deep. So you know, on behalf of the college and our dynamic team of faculty and the organizers, so we are very happy that the presentation was really excellent and very, very informative for the students to pursue excellent career opportunities in the forthcoming years in the area of microbiology. I hope that your guidance will help them to reach great heights in coming tomorrow. We hope that God will be there with all of us to take care that our ideas are very, very proactive as well as you know, they create, co-create a new world is going to come tomorrow and we'll be part of it, all of us together. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, it's a pleasure to, and I th I'm happy to, um, if any anyone wants to reach out uh, to me in terms of if they need any advice uh, or with anything, uh, as long as it's related to research or uh, I'm happy to help them out. So they can follow my uh, social media handles uh, and they can reach out to me directly there. And thank you sure, so much. Sure, please, we are going to post the mail ID in the webinar group so that if yeah. they have any questions, if they have any queries, if they have any doubts regarding education in Australia, they could contact you. Yes, yes. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for accepting our uh, invitation and inspiring all our students, motivating all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you one and all. Looking forward to see you all in the upcoming web webinar. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Rikya. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Yes. May I end the program, ma'am? Yes, really. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Deep, once again. Thank you, ma'am. Pleasure. Thank you. Take care, all of you.